I sought to purchase either Perlintane HCL or MDPV to experience an uncommon stimulant with my friend Drew. Methylene dioxypyrovalerone 1. Got lucky with Perlintane HCL just once, which I predict to be the next wonder designer drug that catches on as it's legal worldwide and OTC in Spain. That was my first choice but it's very hard to source. Perlintane HCL has a quick rush up, steady euphoria, smooth ride throughout, enhances metal faculties and lands soft, over 2 to 5 hours. That's Perlintane, it's legal and it's a winner. My buddy Drew, myself, and his GF are the actors. The GF is a unique character, book smart yet so stupid, who decided to snort MDPV and freebase it as her first experience ever doing any recreational drug. She insisted she partake at every step of use. We did everything we could to discourage her, and Drew and I both sincerely hope she learned from this experience. She believed she could control how the drug affected her, and we both did everything possible to tell her the drug will always control you when it's active in you. I was eating a hearty lunch just waiting for my package to arrive, it was tracked to come anytime. I knew I'd be doing a stimulant, and I'm a stimulant aficionado, so of course I know to eat a full meal beforehand. Drew and the GF also ate well before they came to my house, and we were all in a positive state of excited anticipation. Drew and I both legitimately used 10 mg promethazine tabs and 15 mg Tylenol 3 tabs to ease any unpleasant feelings in the body induced by stimulants and always use saline spray after each snort to save our sinus. We mitigate every negative feeling possible to maximize our experience of the substance we're ingesting. The GF inexplicably despises beneficial medicine. The mass was perfect to the quantity ordered, 2 grams. My brother took his scale and his share of the powder, 500 mg. With that I must note, I'm quite excellent at eyeballing powder up to a gram. All of my estimates are true to both my belief and Drew's, with plus variable included. The MDPV was advertised as 97.9% .9 pure. I took my special works out of their incognito spots and again combined some everyday items to once again be my high class paraphernalia. I haven't done a stimulant, or really any recreational drug, in over a year at this point. I have more experience with stimulants than any other class of drugs, although I have abused or at least tried to abuse almost every class of drugs except antibiotics, more substances than I care to think about. Drew is of extremely strong mind, body and spirit and well-rounded with different stimulants. The GF has never done a recreational drug in her life, but she insists on being treated as an absolute equal in the experience. Drew and I know we have the ability to handle any emergency so we reluctantly allow it to happen. Our expectations of MDP VR. We expected to quickly adapt to any tolerance buildup, we did a lot, and a small dose always got us high, no tolerance ever built up. We expected a hard and fast unpleasant come down to be hellish for no more than 2 hours with a few hours of lingering unpleasantness afterwards, around 4 to 6 hours total, it's closer to 8 of just pure metal fiending felt by us both to be like spending 6 hours of free fall in a hard crash off lots of coke, a hellishness that starts immediately with the come down. And after the first six hours the next two to three are where the urge to reinforce slowly diminishes to non-existent. Six hours of intense urge to redose is a hell of a long time. We see why most people dislike it. However, we felt very little body discomfort except when MDPV was active in stimulating effects. We felt some rarer side effects, things neither of us have ever experienced, for the first time with MDPV. We caused them ourselves, though. With 60 mg plus 10 mg at flashpoint based off tin foil. Here we go now. At about 3 pm, my friend Drew and his GF are at my house, and I eyeball out about 100 mg of powder, plus 25 mg on my silver coke spoon. We're excited, and I eyeball out two 15 mg lines, plus 5 mg, and I quickly take my toot. Drew follows. His GF is our sitter till we're sure we're gonna stay alive. Just an hour or so, though, till she joins and 36 hours till we're free basing 60 mg plus 10 mg off of tin foil together. It hit me in about 30 minutes. I didn't feel any come up, I just noticed I was all of the sudden up. It was extremely pleasant, no rush like cocaine, and I remember thinking that's great and absolutely no problem. That means I won't be chasing some elusive feeling of pleasure that can never be felt again. It affects me like Ritalin and Drew agrees with this list, hyperfocus, increased vigilance, outstanding memory recall and utilization, adept mental agility, and enhanced creative expression in very readable writing. It's excellent for studying and engaging in social bonding, for both of us. The ability to feel a serotonergic effect in a stimulant is new to both of us. The serotonin component we felt is unique to MDPV, 
Ritalin doesn't have it at all, and cocaine is too stimulating and powerful in its action to sense any singular effect. We can only describe MDPV's euphoria coupled with the serotonin quality in its entirety as, mildly empathogenic. We're amazed we can feel this part of the compound as a distinct and separate effect that coalesces into its core stimulation. It's extremely uncommon to sense just one component of a stimulant as exerting a unique effect. Neither of us have ever felt it before, and we believe it's so peculiar in feeling that we'd remember it if we had. I waited until over six hours had passed before I reduced. It was a pleasant six hours and the come down from MDPV at its worst, from my first dose, was exactly like Ritalin's is at its worst, and lasted for only about 30 minutes. Child's play, that's nothing, I remember thinking. It didn't occur to me to stop, obviously. I wanted to experience different doses and different ingestions. I felt no unmanageable reinforcing component at this point. I didn't realize the come down I felt at that point would last for 6 hours after the last dose. I only experienced it for 30 minutes because I reduced with Drew. Our second dose comes around 9.30 pm I lay out two lines of 25 mg plus 5 mg in Drew and I take them. Plus 30 minutes around 10 pm we're feeling up and back on our feet and decide at this point we're going to binge and stop at 48 hours. We know that's a safe length of time to experiment. We snort another 10 to 15 mg which was quickly cut out. His GF was coming back in soon and we didn't want her asking for more. This is the first time she's ever done any drug in her life, and she starts by snorting. Great. Similar effects. I ride out a long period of social interaction and emotional intimacy with Drew and his GF. We talk about a threesome but it never pans out. I spend time reading academic work by Robert Greene on the internet while they have two hours worth of sex on my bed next to me. The drug feels like Ritalin and I love it. Because of the binge I do not have the opportunity to feel what a come down stretched out longer than 6 hours feels like until almost 23 to 30 hours down the line. At 3 am Drew and I do another 25 mg plus 5 mg, and stay up and talk for hours alone. We revel in our interaction and exploit the empathogenic aspect we are unaccustomed to in stimulants. I forget exactly what happened during 3 am until 7 am, but I do remember using the computer. At 7 am we do more. The GF. Freshly rested, joins Drew and I again. She does a lot, insisting she take as much as us, 30 mg plus 5 mg. Drew and I are trying to find a plateau for the drug, we want to know for sure if there is a high plateau we can achieve but not surpass, we're taking more just makes us feel physically fucked. If I do cocaine when I'm soaring high as a kite on it it just makes me feel like dying. Cocaine has a high point plateau, and so does Ritalin. MDPV does not, in the doses we've tried. I believe I can keep getting higher until I die from the side effects, like with methamphetamine. We walk to the store and pick up a pack of cigarettes. The GF, looking very unsettled and pale, feigns enjoyment that's shattered when she vomits all over outside the store. I spend a lot of my morning writing while Drew and the GF do some relationship sorting. I didn't get involved. I wrote. A lot. At 2 to 3 pm we are sitting around and Drew suggests we try to smoke this out of a light bulb. I don't have a clear light bulb thank god and no rice kernels either. Yay. Fuck he suggests tin foil, alright, so whatever. Let's rock. I still have around 1.15 grams of the stuff at this point. I hate smoking stimulants. I've done this twice and I only know how to base because I felt like learning how to one day with a friend. I wasted a lot of product then and I think this will be inefficient but fuck it I agree. I get the aluminum foil. We smoked a total of around 60 mg plus 10 mg a piece. Drew me and the GF at the same quantity. The GF wasted a third of hers, she had no clue what she was doing but she got enough so that her story becomes interesting anyway. Drew and I make great strides in efficient inhalation, but the amount was a big big mistake. The girl who insisted she could handle it and showed us she was in control by sleeping the night before flaked apart in mind body and spirit. She devolves into a pure amphetamine psychosis. It manifested with increasing amounts of incoherent psychobabble. Within an hour we dose her with 30 mg, a very excessive dosage, of profenazine, an antipsychotic. The girl refused beneficial medicine and ended up puking again from stomach discomfort almost immediately and began flailing around violently after 10 minutes of trying to hold herself together after smoking her dose. We told her not to do it, but she insisted. Drew and I are both stimulant pros and even we were very sickly uncomfortable for the first hour after we did it. She thought she needed a hospital and wouldn't shut up about feeling like she was dying and her brain was betraying her. She became acutely psychotic, paranoid and delusional in the 15 to 30 minutes after her dose. 
I slipped her the 30 milligrams of perfenazine and I'm sure she reconnected to reality as she passed out and slipped into unconsciousness. Thank God. We carried her to a bed, and he checked in on her regularly, on my cues, of course. She's lucky I had an antipsychotic on hand, the alternative might have been a fucking hospital. Drew and I suffered the worst stimulant side effects of our life for about an hour. The best I can do when my mask the feeling meds don't cover all side effects up is try to ignore them. Focus on something else. We took 20 mg of promethazine and 2 tabs of 15 mg Tylenol 3s. There was nearly an hour straight of tachycardia with elevated blood pressure. Feeling my heart pound in my chest sucks. There was the most uncomfortable and intense feelings of, tense chest and torso, coursing and sinewy feeling along every nerve system in my body, bruxism, elevated body temperature, twitchy eyes, seeing spots, bats of watery eyes, malaise and general unease, racing thoughts, incoherent and rambling speech and scattered thought processes, not psychotic or delusional though, but more would have put us close to it. Free basing gave me a hell of a rush up with MDPV. It's hard, fast, and enjoyably intense, not overbearing like I found methamphetamine to be and overwhelming like I sometimes find large first lines of cocaine to be. Drew lives for any rush he'd have done more if he didn't know he needed to feel the effects out. We wanted to find out if it flashed off a of foil, really, and simply discover if it was possible. After an hour we're still at the highest point we've ever been on a Ritalin, coke-like stimulant. It's fucking awesome when the side effects go away, after that hour, it's pure speed, stronger than Ritalin's euphoria, a lackadaisical social ease that made me feel like interacting with sober people, our heads were back on right and our minds were sharp as attack in every enjoyable way. We became lucid and communicative again, and decide to go for a short walk through the woods in the area. His GF was alive and sleeping fine for over an hour now, overdosed but not lethal. The crash from smoking it for both of us was no different than the crash from snorting it. I'd never orally ingest MDPV, though, that according to all of our experiences, would probably prolong an 8-hour craving. It's unfortunately not possible to mitigate or diminish the intense first 6-hour long urge to do more we felt with this drug, to the best of our knowledge. We take our last dose of the binge at around 4 pm, perhaps 10 mg plus 3 mg. I tried to be exact when we did it. Same feelings, and I put the bag in a place I was unable to access for 13 hours at least. Good move on my part as I needed that solid 8 hours of sleep. I didn't fall out from that 4 pm dose with any ease until around 3 am that's 11 hours from last used to natural sleep. I fiended right up until around 12 midnight, a solid 6 hours of a very strong desire to do more. Again, it felt like crashing off coke and feeling like you need more for 6 hours straight without feeling high with the feeling slowly going away in the 7th and 8th hours. No remarkable residual effects were present after 8 hours had passed since the last dose. The serotonin component after 48 hours of using and 55 total hours awake did not affect my mood the next day and I felt genuinely at standard sober baseline with 8 hours of sleep. Drew expressed nothing different. The GH somehow got a ride and bounced while we were asleep. She's shaken, not stirred. The fiending urge lasted until every single after effect wears off, a total of 8 hours, and it didn't start seriously diminishing until a solid 6 hours after my last dose. That's how I experienced it, and that's how Drew experienced it, and we're quite experienced in experiences. The GF got rofied with 30 mg of an antipsychotic and I have no idea what she experienced other than an amphetamine psychosis and she braved out crazy side effects like a nut job, despite the ability to get rid of them. Peace, love and sanity forever, thrills, fun and productivity in the moment, insight, memories and strength from your past, 